Hi, this is Father Fish. I know you have a fish in your tank that you would love to be able to breed. Can you just imagine watching those two or three or four or five swim around? How magnificent it would be if they were 20 or 30 or 40 or more? Can you just imagine? Well, I'm going to teach you how to do it. We're going to make it happen. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Breeding and raising the fry from tiny little fish, what is called egg scatterers. These are not fish that build nests. They're fish that scatter their eggs abroad. Poor baby with no mommy. Oh well, the life of a fish. But they love each other and that's what we're gonna create. So there are two types of these eggs the adhesive egg and the loose egg. We're going to deal primarily with the loose. The adhesive eggs are kind of another problem and I really think I ought to save that for a separate video. So these are egg scatterers. Those are all of the tetras, all of the danios, the rasboras, any fish that lays eggs just kind of scatters them and they roll abroad. Uh, pink salmon, if you want to grow salmon in your tank. Salmon like non of eggs. I think they do anyway. So, those little tetras you've got, those gorgeous little ember tetras. We're going to teach you how to raise them. <clears throat> well, they'd be fun. So, there are lots of different devices that people use. Generally, the adults, when they're fattened up and ready to go, are pulled out of the tank put in a separate container, and then some kind of device is put in there to allow the eggs to go through the device and to separate them from the parents so the parents can't eat them because they will eat them. And they will eat them voraciously. They love them. It's their favorite food. So there are all sorts of mesh that can be used. There's cloth mesh, there's rigid mesh, anything that's with large enough holes that the eggs can get through and the parents can't. Once they finish spawning, which is usually a, a one to two to three day process, take the parents out, take the mesh out, and then watch the babies, watch the eggs, they will hatch. When they hatch, do not put food in with them. You'll kill them. They're not ready to eat. Half of them don't even have mouths. So you need to wait. Wait until that yolk sac they have fully absorbed and they are fully developed with fins and eyes and a mouth enough to be able to start swimming. Once they start swimming, they're doing one thing, looking for food because the egg sac is gone and they are starved. You want live food. Don't mess around with dry food or some kind of crushed flake or any of that. You will foul the water. You will deprive them of food. It just, you might get lucky and save a few. You're gonna lose everything most of the time. Develop culture. And you develop culture, you can buy microworm culture, vinegar eel culture, paramecium culture. They're all available online. You can buy them and you can feed them. Learn how to keep those cultures going. Learn how to start them. We'll do another video on culture, how to create cultures and how to get them going. That'll be good. Meanwhile, we're back at the ranch here feeding our baby fish. There's really nothing more to it. You want to keep the water clean, siphon out any detritus on the bottom. Every couple of days, do a 25% water change. Try not to water change the babies while you're at it. And just keep it as healthy. Put a sponge filter in there with the babies. Once you start feeding, that'll get them going. It'll also keep the water a lot healthier. All right, there's another way to do this, and it's really my favorite, and that is to do a food web. Raise them in your tank. Now, you can't do this with the sticky eggs. Those have to come out. But if you want to raise them in your tank, 
the first thing to do is to gradually build up a food web. I've got lots of videos about food web. Basically, it's a resurrection jar. Videos about that too. You're going to gradually build this food web in your aquarium by putting some live culture in at first and then every week adding leaves. Now you can scrunch them up, put them in whole, doesn't matter. Every week you add leaves, little tiny twigs, seed pods, anything like that that is dead and dried and has no life remaining in it. You don't want to put anything live in like that because it will drown, die, and foul. Don't do it. Just dead dry stuff. Get it built up to about an inch. That's going to build a tremendous web, a tremendous culture of microfauna in there. And you're going to find that your fish are going to be diving into it. They're going to be spawning above it. Eggs are going to be going down into it. Eggs will be hatching. Babies will be finding food. It'll be a wonder, an amazement. So to do this, you need to build a population of fish. So you want to select the fish you've selected. You want a minimum of six. Get them in your tank, be feeding them. Feed them live food. Daphnia are wonderful. Brine shrimp are wonderful. Black microworms, you can buy some of those. Scuds are wonderful. Anything the adults can eat that you can keep in there, you want to keep it in. The food web is not going to be enough for a number of fish. They'll deplete it, so you need to add culture to it. If what you're trying to do is build breeding populations. If you're just trying to maintain them, you don't need to do that very much at all. You can do some to ensure the food stays in there, but to create breeding populations, you must feed more heavily. Get it built up. Then when the babies hatch, you begin to see babies. You want to build up that food for them. That's vinegar eels, microworm culture, paramecium, all of which are cultures you can raise. And then use your resurrection jar. Get stuff going in there and be dumping that in. Again, to keep that culture up so that the babies don't deplete it and run out of food. Once the babies are born and you see them, continue food for the adults so they don't come looking for the babies. You don't want that to happen either. If they do not spawn, if they're refusing to spawn, do 10% water changes every day for three to four days. That should trigger their spawning. There are some fish that wait for rain, that wait for, for uh, an infusion of fresh water to come into the tank because that usually will cause an explosion of microfauna. So you might do that if you're finding they're not spawning right away. I'll tell you what, guys, there really isn't any more to it than that. It's really that simple. Watching one video is not going to get you where you need to go. You need more than that. Get over to the website where you'll see 1,500 videos, but they're broken down into groups. And there's a group on breeding fish. Click on that. It's another group on creating food culture. Click on that and watch some videos about it. Learn how to do it. Get started. Come on over to Father Fish Shoal to our Discord server. You'll be able to learn so much more. And then go to Father Fish's store. You can buy a lot of the supplies that you will need there. Make a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you'll know when new videos are coming out. Share the love, and we'll see you soon. Love you all. Bye for now. Father Fitch, bye for now.